More than 30 years after NASA launched the Hubble Space Telescope, its giant successor is designed to see through the most ancient mists of deep space. The farther one looks into the cosmos, the farther back in time one goes. So, Webb will help scientists study some of the earliest light in the universe, as well as peer more closely at planets and other galaxies. So let's talk about it. Welcome to Space World. In today's video, we are going to talk about how James Webb is going to see the beginning of time. So if you want to know more about it, then stay with us until the end of the video. Astronomers have studied the universe with telescopes on the ground and in space for decades. They have detected some ancient galaxies, capturing them as they appeared billions of years ago, when the photons peeled off the surfaces of their stars and wafted across the universe. Still, there are whole chapters missing. We don't really know beyond those broad outlines how or when the first stars and galaxies came to be. Scientists have done what they can, stretching existing telescopes to their limits and filling in the gaps with theoretical models. But they know that there's more primordial light out there, streaked with answers to some of humanity's most existential questions. They just need a new kind of instrument to help them look even deeper. This is where James Webb comes in. The newest deep space observatory, the James Webb Space Telescope, will give us a deeper view into the infrared universe than the iconic Hubble. A new video from the European Space Agency, ESA, showcases how Webb will open new vistas into astronomical objects across the universe, ranging from galaxies formed billions of years ago to clouds of gas and dust surrounding newborn stars. As we know that, infrared light is the heat-carrying part of the electromagnetic spectrum with longer wavelengths than visible light. The Hubble Space Telescope is optimized for visible light, but can also detect some ultraviolet and some infrared. Webb, however, was developed as an infrared specialist and can take on a much larger span of infrared wavelengths. That, for example, means seeing even deeper into the universe than Hubble does. Since the universe is expanding, the galaxies farther away from us are moving away at greater speeds than the closer ones. The light these galaxies emit is shifted into longer, redder wavelengths as a result of the Doppler effect, also known as red shift in astronomy. So, with better views of the early universe, NASA said in a separate release last year about Webb's infrared capabilities, astronomers hope to gain more insight about how galaxies formed and evolved. As infrared light is less subject to interference from dust, Webb will also allow astronomers to see what's going on inside of dust clouds in the nearer universe. We can penetrate the dust and see the processes leading to star and planet formation, ESA said in a statement. This means that, for example, Hubble's 2020 view of the iconic Eagle Nebula, Pillars of Creation, in infrared could look different with Webb's infrared gaze. The pillars are a famous zone of star formation, for which Webb may provide more insight. Star formation in the local universe takes place in the center of dense, dusty clouds, obscured from our eyes at normal visible wavelengths, ESA said in a statement. So, peering into objects in the nearer universe will provide additional answers that will further help astronomers build up their understanding of the universe's evolution. We really need to understand the local universe in order to understand all of the universe, Martha Boyer, deputy branch manager of Webb's near-infrared camera, NearCam, one of the two cameras on board of Webb that will perform the infrared observations, said in the NASA release. Speaking of the galaxies closest to our own, the Milky Way, Boyer said in the so-called local group, will be a mini-laboratory, allowing astronomers to look at galaxies in high definition. The local group consists of three main galaxies, the Milky Way included, which are all located within 5 million light-years of Earth. The largest of these galaxies is Andromeda. The Milky Way is the middle one, and the galaxy known as Triangulum is the smallest of the three. The group also includes about 50 dwarf galaxies that mostly orbit the large ones. Further away galaxies, Boyer added, can't resolve much detail, so we don't know exactly what's going on. A major step towards understanding distant or early galaxies 
is to study this collection of galaxies that are within our reach. Therefore, Webb will look, too, at far more than just the first sparks of the universe. It's an all-purpose telescope that can observe the planets and moons in our solar system, our asteroids and comets, inspect planets that belong to other suns and planets that don't belong to any star at all, study tiny particles of interstellar dust and gaping supermassive black holes and mysterious luminous objects called quasars. This is the telescope that wants to capture, well, nearly everything. It sounds almost greedy, but it's the good version of greedy. This new space venture doesn't involve a nation trying to beat its rival to the moon or space billionaires comparing their rockets. But the project at its core represents some of our purest intentions in space exploration. Scientists want to understand the arc of our strange universe, how it led to a story of life on Earth, and whether the narrative has unfolded anywhere else. They want to capture the light of celestial objects and pick it apart the way raindrops bend sunlight into a rainbow, and learn what they're made of, whether they're something as familiar as Mars or as mysterious as a primordial star. And the pictures should be pretty great, too. Apart from this, for an astronomer, looking through the web is like entering a time machine. Chris Willett, an astronomer with the Herzberg Astronomy and Astrophysics Research Center in Victoria, is the telescope's project scientist for Canada. When you stop and think about it, the light we're detecting with our telescope actually left there long before Earth was even around, he says. That's kind of crazy to think about. Now, safely nestled 1.5 million kilometers from Earth in a region of space known as the second Lagrange point, the web is orbiting the sun while remaining in line with the Earth. L2 is a sweet spot in the solar system that allows the telescope to use minimal energy to stay in place while remaining cold enough to take photographs with impeccable clarity. In late March, the web returned its first photo, a sharp image of a twinkling star 2,000 light years from Earth. It exceeded Team Webb's expectations. The telescope's body, which features a primary mirror 6.5 meters across, formed of 18 golden hexagons, is fitted with four instruments, including the Near Infrared Imager and Slit Lens Spectrograph, or NEARES, designed and built in Canada. Think of it like a camera that can capture many different infrared wavelengths in the same image. Willett has plans to point NEARES at massive galaxy clusters at redshift half, which is, in astronomy terms, relatively close. For the uninitiated, the redshift number is a measurement of time it has taken the light from an object to reach us. And this is it for today, guys. What are your thoughts on today's video? Share your views with us in the comments below. Also, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell icon for more amazing videos about space. And thank you for watching.